Hello and good evening. Thanks for joining us. For headlines tonight, government committed to reducing unemployment in 2022. And country borders targeted to reopen in second quarter of this year. The government pledged to reduce the unemployment rate by providing 600,000 job opportunities this year through the Jamin Kerja Keluarga Malaysia Initiative. Prime Minister Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri Yaakob said these were provided with the allocation of 4.8 billion ringgit as job creation was a key thrust under Budget 2022. According to the Premier, the initiative consists of three main programmes, namely the Employment Initiative, the Malaysia Short-Term Employment Programme, MyStep, as well as the Training and Upskilling Upskill Malaysia Programme. Program Jamin Kerja Insentif Penggajian akan memberi tumpuan kepada usaha merangsang para majikan untuk membuat pengambilan pekerja terutamanya dalam kalangan individu yang tidak aktif bekerja seperti golongan penganggur, golongan rentan seperti OKU, bekas banduan, warga emas dan golongan wanita menganggur bagi tempoh berpanjangan untuk memastikan tiada golongan dipinggirkan. The employment initiative would be implemented by the social security organization with the target of providing about 300,000 job opportunities. As for the Malaysia short-term employment program, he said it would offer 80,000 job opportunities in the public sector, government-linked companies and strategic partners. He added the Upskill Malaysia program will provide skills training for job seekers to increase their marketability as well as guarantee job placement with a target of 220 20,000 trainees. Meanwhile, the Prime Minister said the move to potentially raise a minimum wages to 1,500 ringgit in the country requires a holistic approach in order to achieve a win-win situation for both employers and employees. He said the Human Resources Ministry, which had presented a salary high proposal to the Cabinet last week, is in the midst of engaging all employers on the matter. The Premier said that the Ministry would discuss the matter with the Congress of Unions of Employees in the Public and Civil Services and other related associations, including employers. Datuk Sri Ismail Sabri said the ministry would once again present its proposal to the cabinet after it concludes its discussions with stakeholders. In another development, Dr. Sri Ismail Sabri revealed that a total of 20.34 billion ringgit has been channeled to help over 350,000 employers and nationwide through the wage subsidy program. The Prime Minister said the initiative has managed to help 2.95 million workers secure their jobs, thus reducing the unemployment rate and reviving the local labour force. Bagi mengurangkan jurang ketidakpadanan pekerjaan dengan kelayakan pencari kerja, saya menyeru pihak industri untuk melaksanakan strategi pengambilan pekerja yang lebih baik dengan mengambil kira perubahan sosial termasuk suasana pekerjaan yang lebih fleksibel agar padanan yang lebih baik dapat diwujudkan. Majikan juga perlu lebih kreatif dalam memberi jaminan pekerjaan yang baik kepada pekerja supaya mereka kekal bersama majikan tersebut. 
The Ministry of Finance has allocated 1.7 billion ringgit for the Malaysia short-term employment program MyStep with the target of creating 80,000 jobs this year. Its Minister Tengku Datuk Sri Zafrul Tengku Abdul Aziz said that job seekers should take advantage of all the opportunities available through the MOF and the Ministry of Human Resources. Pada tahun 2021 berbanding sasaran 50,000 kita berjaya menempatkan lebih 63,000 graduan di mana 66% ditempatkan di pelbagai kementerian dan agensi kerajaan manakala 34% di GLC dan rakan-rakan strateginya. The minister expressed confidence that the government will be able to repeat last year's success where achievements had exceeded the target. In a related development, Tengku Datuk Sri Zafro said that the government's efforts in creating more job opportunities and businesses can drive the projected gross domestic product GDP growth between 5.5 and 6.5 percent this year. Kara ini kerajaan telah mengambil langkah proaktif melalui penubuhan Majlis Pekerjaan Negara pada tahun yang lepas. Majlis yang dipengerusikan oleh Yang Amat Berhormat Perdana Menteri ini adalah sejajar dengan hasrat kerajaan dalam memastikan pemulihan dan rangsangan sektor ekonomi di Malaysia berdasarkan pendekatan menyeluruh, berpandukan data dan sepadan dengan permintaan industri semasa. A realistic target for Malaysia borders to reopen is early in the second quarter of this year. According to Health Minister Kari Jamaluddin, the Health Ministry will come up with the Standard Operating Procedures SOP for border reopening and there are several stages to go through for it to be approved. Kairi said he will present the SOPs to the COVID-19 Pandemic Management Committee, which is chaired by the Prime Minister and to the Quartet of Ministers led by Dr. Sri Shamuddin Tun Hussein before it can be tabled to the Cabinet for the approval as it involves a huge national policy. He added that the Prime Minister would make the official announcement on when the country's borders would fully reopen. Tapi saya menjangkakan, saya menjangkakan dua minggu kita siap. Mungkin suku tahun tebu adalah satu timeline yang realistik awal suku tahun tebu. Tapi tarikhnya biarlah yang berkomat menentukan nanti. The SOPs would take into account the aspects of the people's health as well as economic recovery. It was previously reported that the National Recovery Council had recommended for the country's borders to reopen for quarantine-free travel by 1st March. Yesterday, the Prime Minister said the Health Ministry had been given two to three weeks to present proposals and SOPs to the Cabinet for the reopening of the borders. Up next, telecommunication companies urge to upgrade network systems. The Communications and Multimedia Ministry is planning to add about 15 to 20 units of community gadgets at all Keluarga Malaysia Digital Economy Centres, PEDI and Nationwide. Its Minister Tan Sri Anwar Musa said this is to increase the centres' usability and the participation of the people in digital economic activities. Elaborating further on the matter, Tan Sri Anwar said the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission is currently in the process of acquiring the items. Kalau sekarang ni ada 20 uh, putu terminal ataupun uh, atau desktop ada 20. Jadi penggunaan pun terhad kepada 20 pada satu-satu masa. Karena mungkin ada lagi 15 ke 20 tablet yang komuniti boleh gunakan sama ada di sini atau mungkin boleh juga dalam bentuk pinjaman bawa balik ke rumah untuk menggalakkan mereka membuat aktiviti susulan uh, ataupun dia boleh menyertai sebab tempat sekarang SOP tak boleh ada ramai-ramai dalam pusat. 
He said this after officiating the Keluarga Malaysia Digital Economy Centre in Felda, Kahang Barat, Keluang, Johor. Meanwhile, Tan Sri Anwar urged telecommunication companies operating in Malaysia to reinvest in and upgrade their network systems to ensure their signal quality is always good. He said that he would be calling for a meeting with all telco bosses soon. Tan Sri Anwar said he had received a report that 98% of areas throughout the country have connectivity but some users are still experiencing bad services. So kita nak tengok semua telco. Sekarang ni pun telco pun ada dua tiga darjat. Ada the big four, ada the second dan sebagainya. Jadi kita mau tengok ada perkhidmatan yang baik daripada semua telco yang telah kita lesenkan. Dan saya nak, nah ni nak kata amaran bunyi kasar kan. Cuma saya nak beritahu, saya nak minta MCMC buat audit, semak prestasi perkhidmatan telco kerana undang-undang membolehkan kita mendenda compound syarikat yang tak memenuhi apa yang ditetapkan. The minister stressed that the companies must be serious in upgrading their network service systems as they had been recording huge profits. The Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industries through the Mafi Prihatin program will contribute 13.2 tons of agriculture products worth 134,000 ringgit as animal feed to government agencies this year. Its Deputy Minister to Adato Dr. Nick Mohamad Zawawi Saleh said among the agencies involved were the Prison Department and the Wildlife and National Parks Department Perhilitan, which will receive the animal feed supplies such as frozen chicken and meat products. Serahan ini adalah bertujuan untuk memastikan bekalan makanan haiwan kepada pihak berkaitan dalam keadaan yang mencukupi dan memenuhi keperluan bekalan bahan mentah untuk dijadikan makanan kepada haiwan ternakan. Uh, untuk makluman di penjara ini ada usahawan-usahawan uh, daripada banduan uh, yang mengusahakan uh, ternakan yang memerlukan kepada makanan. He further explained that all the meat products had been fortified forfeited for not complying with the Malaysian Quarantine and Inspection Services Act 2011, Act 728. According to him, the ministry is now actively assisting departments and agencies in need, apart from ensuring the imported agricultural products are free from plant diseases and passed through the Malaysian Quarantine and Inspection Services Department enforcement at the country's entry points. About 300 million ringgit has been approved by the federal government for the People's Highway project which connects Bukit Tiu and Kampung Brangan Magnap in Kelantan. Minister in the Prime Minister's Department for Economy, Dato Sri Mustafa Muhammad said the allocation for the 10km highway was approved under the 12th Malaysia Plan. Explaining further, Dato Sri Mustafa said the project is now under assessment by the Public Works Department. The construction is expected to start in April and will take about 36 months to complete or by April 2025. <laughs> Jadi ini satu perkara baru saya nak maklumkan bahawa punya pusat ya, berbincang lama juga dengan kerajaan negeri. Akhirnya tahun lalu uh, sudah ada persetujuan kerajaan pusat akan ambil alih. In another development, Dato Sri Mustafa said there has been a slight delay for the Kota Baru Kuala Krai Highway project involving package 2B from Katere to Kotlanas. He said the 62 kilometer stretch is now expected to be completed in October. The Ministry of Domestic Trade and Consumer Affairs, KPDN HGP, and the Ministry of Agriculture and Food Industry, MAFI, are ready with an intervention plan to ensure sufficient supply of eggs throughout the country during the fasting month and Hari Raya Idul Fitri. 
His Deputy Minister, Dr. Russell Wahid, said this was due to KPD and HEP's anticipation that during the fasting month and Hari Raya Idol Fitri, which will arrive soon, the consumption of eggs will be higher than usual. Dan uh, kita akan uh, menjalankan buah berevokasi uh, dan juga perundingan dengan mafi dan pengusaha pengusaha telur untuk memastikan ianya akan mencukupi menjelang raya dan juga menjelang, menjelang puasa. Meanwhile, Dato Russell said his ministry had recorded 95 offences related to the maximum price of chicken and eggs involving 94 retailers and one wholesalers nationwide from 5th February until yesterday. He said of the total 87 cases involved offences of not displaying the special pink price tag, 7 cases of selling chicken and eggs above the maximum price, while one case had no price tag. The national men's team are getting closer to clinching their maiden badminton Asia team championships a BATC title thanks to a 3-0 victory over South Korea in the semi-finals today. The win saw Malaysia avenge the defeat of the women's squad at the hands of the Koreans by a similar score earlier. It was a stuttering start for Malaysia as All England champion and home crowd favourite Lee Zijia was humbled 13-21 by Jeon Hyo Jin, ranked 2094th in the world in the first game. The world number seven, however, regained his composure to take the second game 21-13 before winning 21-15 in the rubber game to give Malaysia the first point. Tokyo Olympics 2020 men's doubles bronze medalist Aaron Chia and Su Wu Yik also did not disappoint, continued the winning momentum with a strong display to come out tops against Kim Hui Tae, Kim J Won winning 21-14 in the first game. The duo was caught off guard at the next game as they narrowly lost 20-22 before taking back the match 21-19 in the third game. Second single men's shuttler, Ng Ze Yong, secured the flawless victory for Malaysia after edging past Kim Ju Won. Ze Yong wrapped up the encounter 19-21, 21-16 and 21-12, setting up a final clash against Indonesia, who defeated Singapore on their side of the semis. And that concludes this evening's News at 10. In our top story, government committed to reducing unemployment in 2022. Join us again at 12.30 tomorrow afternoon. Until then, I'm Aslan Stay tuned to Saloran Brita RTM and have a pleasant evening. Good.